It was about 6.30 in the evening and I decided that I would go down to the nurse's station and ask if she would get the sharps box out. Now, for those of you who've never been a patient in a psychiatric ward, that's probably kind of you know, confusing language, but I had, I was in my, probably my third week of being inpatient in a psych hospital. And, you know, when you're a patient there, they'll take away things like your hair dryer or, you know, anything that you could potentially hurt yourself or someone else with. So I decided I was going to blow dry my hair. So I started down the corridor towards um, the nurse's station and, and I paused because it was a scene that was familiar to me. There were two girls, I assumed to be daughters, helping, standing side either side of this woman who was probably in her late 60s, early 70s, and she was sobbing, absolutely sobbing, and they were kind of literally holding her up. And I, I recognized that she was probably a new patient coming into the psych hospital, and I remember my first night and how overwhelming that was. So wanting to respect their privacy, I paused, and then I, I turned around intended to go back to my room until they had finished the admissions process. But one of the daughters caught sight of, of me and she cried out, mom, mom, look. And I, I, I stopped because, and they, they all looked at me and the two daughters started to cry. And one of them signaled to me to come down. And so I, I walked toward them. I had no idea what was going on. But they began to explain and they said, this is our mom and she has lived in a very abusive relationship for so many years. We have begged her to get help. You know, my father has broken her jaw. He's broken her arm. It's been, but her thing was, you know, I made a commitment to this marriage and I need to stick it out and I can't go and get help. But they'd finally persuaded her. They got her in the car and they were driving to the psych hospital. But in the parking lot, they paused and they prayed and they said, Lord Jesus, will you please give my mom a sign that she's in a good place? And what I didn't know was that was during the time when I had co-hosted the 700 Club for five years. And the big joke in the family was that I was the third daughter because the mom loved me so much. And this, the fact that God in his grace and mercy put me in a psych hospital at the same time as this sweet mom who looked on me as a daughter was just, it was, I mean, she and I were so close during the remaining two weeks I had, but it was the first thing that I saw that helped me understand that we need to be there for each other within this community. We need to encourage one another that for those of us who perhaps don't understand the process of, of mental illness that we can share with one another, we can speak to one another. And the other thing I've realized in my own life now is that where your scars are, there lies your authority. Now, for somebody um, like mm -hmm. you, Kayla, who's lost a husband, I can't imagine what that is like. I can't speak to that. And But there's something about when you have walked through something that has been a real trauma, and yet God has brought a level of healing that you're able then to minister to other people who are perhaps just coming a little bit further behind and let them know, you know what? I just want you to know God is here in this moment. Hi, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. Thanks for being a part of our Better Together community.